What's up, people? In this video, I'm going to tell you about the time that I got jacked for a QP, a quarter pound of weed, back in the day when I had a oh, $1,200 worth of weed stolen from me. It's kind of a funny story. Um, it is not, you know, obviously like drugs are bad, you shouldn't do drugs, you definitely shouldn't sell drugs, illegal drugs. Like, it's very bad, it's very stupid. This was from a time where I was stupider and younger and thought I was basically immortal. As did all my friends, we all did a bunch of stupid shit. This is one of them, and this is the one or one of the times where I there were negative consequences, which surprisingly there, there weren't very many like outright negative consequences. I guess you could make the argument that the years of my life that I spent doing stupid shit instead of being like a productive member of society and let's say building my legacy, right? Which is kind of what I think I'm doing now with all these videos. Think of that what you want. That's how I see it. Um, yeah, my legacy is like reacting to Stephanie Buttermore. Oh God, it's so pathetic. Anyway, um, oh well, I, I guess that's better than like selling weed, really. Or, or maybe it's not, I don't know. Anyway, back in the day, I used to sell weed, I used to sell a lot of stuff, because when you sell weed, you know, other people want other things, maybe you make some deals here and there, get some of this, get some of that, and you help people hook them up, and it comes a little business, right? So back in the day, uh, I used to live in this place called the Palisades, and one day I was driving, um, they call it down the hill, right? Like, I used to live in this place called the Highlands in the Palisades, like, near the Palisades, which is in between Santa Monica and Malibu, and it's on, it's actually on the beach, right? Those of you who know about Santa Monica and Malibu, those are two very nice, like, popular, famous parts of LA. Uh, the Palisades is, like, nestled in between there. It's very quiet, it's not very commercial, no reason to really go there. So most people haven't heard of it. You have a lot of celebrities that buy houses there. A lot of famous people live there because, for that exact reason. So I used to live there, and the part that I used to live in was, a, was called the Highlands, right? Now, the Highlands was kind of separated from the rest of the Palisades because you had to drive through this little canyon that was maybe two miles, three miles, maybe. I don't know. Any, any Palisadians out there, feel free to correct me. Uh, maybe, I don't know, three, four miles like of this canyon that you like drive through in order to get to the Highlands. So I lived in the Highlands, and the, the problem with living in the Highlands as a, you know, young teenager or whatever, or somebody without a car, is that you're, you're far, like it's too far to walk to, to town, right? It's too far to walk to the Palisades or to the beach or whatever, you know, because you won't get there for like a couple hours. So you'd see some people hitchhike. I used to hitchhike occasionally. This is not like hitchhiking, hitchhiking some like random ship part of the country. This is like, you know, like a white affluent neighborhood on the beach next to Santa Monica, it's fine. So anyway, I used to hitchhike and I would pick up hitchhikers because I could sympathize with their pain. And uh, this one time I like left, you know, where I was living and I started driving down the hill and I saw this young guy like hitchhiking. So I picked him up and I had a lot of weed in my car at the time. And he gets in my car and literally the first thing he says, he goes like, Man, it smells really good in here. And I was like, yeah, like, you know, I have, like, I have weed if you want. Like, take my number, hit me up any time. So I dropped him off, and um, maybe a few days later, I get a call from him. And I was, I was hanging out with a friend of mine. And this friend, all my friends back then, we all were all on deck, right? We all had something. And we would uh, basically sit around all day and play video games and smoke weed. And when somebody called us, you know, to buy something, we would go drive out, meet them, and then come back. And we just kind of like used his or one of we used one of their apartments. Like whoever had an apartment on their own, like obviously not like the family. Uh, whoever had an apartment, we used, used their house as like a kind of a base of operations. It's bad stuff. Don't do this. Don't do any of this. Any anybody, any of you out there. Um, so anyway, this one day, uh, I get a call from this kid. And he's like, "Hey man, what's up? It's me. Like, gave me a ride the other day." Uh, blah blah blah. Like, how much for a QP? Right? QP for those of you who don't know is a quarter pound, which is a fairly large order of weed. Right? Like, normally, like it, it's a, it's an order for a dealer. Really, is what it is. Like, if you're just a casual weed smoker, unless you're just like a baller or something like that, you're not you're not going to buy a, a quarter pound of weed. You might get an ounce for yourself, like three hundred bucks or a half ounce or something for yourself because maybe you smoke a lot of weed. Maybe you just like don't want to like think about how much you're smoking. You just want to like grab some, put it in the pipe and smoke it whenever you want without having to like worry about going and buying more from your dealer anytime soon. But a QP is like you're buying that to distribute, really, is what it is. I, I don't know, maybe some people out there buy a QP and go through it in like a week, but like not possible. So anyway, I get this order from this kid and it was it was an order that I could handle. Like I could handle an order that large, but 
I'd never dealt with this person before. Only really knew him from giving him a ride from my neighborhood, like down into town. So I told my friend this. My friend also very experienced in the game, and he's like, "Do you want me to come with you?" And I'm like, "No." He's like, "We were just going to meet like right out right outside the gate of the apartment." And I was like, "No, don't worry about it. Like, I'm thinking everything will be fine. Like, never really been jacked before, never been jumped before." And he's like, "Here, take my knife, just in case." We had a little switchblade. I was like, okay, fine, I'll take it. I'm not going to need it, but okay, I'll take it. Uh, so I go outside, and I'm like waiting for this kid. I have like a duffel bag or whatever. Not a duffel bag, or like a little mini backpack. And um, I see this kid like walking towards me, and he's walking like a little strange. He's like walking really slow, but like looking kind of behind me. I was like, hey, man, what's up? Like blah, blah, blah. And he's like, like halting kind of a little bit. And he like, he like looks behind me. And I like I turn around and and I see this like really big guy coming towards me. I know who it is. I, I don't want to blow him up like on YouTube, like say who this person is, but like whatever. And the reason I like I don't want to blow him up is cause, like I, I don't even want to give a hint as to his identity because like he's related. Whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, the the shorter guy, the guy that I gave the ride to, he tries to grab the bag out of my hand, right? And we're like fighting over the bag. And like I try and kick him, I like kick him in the stomach, and he's like, "You motherfucker, I'll fucking kill you!" Blah blah blah. And the other guy, the guy behind me, I know he's coming. I know like I'm, I'm not gonna win this really. I'm really just trying to grab the bag and like run or something. But the other guy like drops me to the ground, sits on me, and like has my head on the ground and fucking hits me in the head like five times until I like, stop struggling. Thank God he stopped because like in the Palisades. Anyway, I, I don't want to say who it is, but like there's a lot of people who train martial arts in the Palisades. I won't say at what studio they do, but if you're from the Palisades and you're around my age, like you know like who these people are. Whatever. And a lot of them are fucking assholes. So anyway, thank God this guy like he, he really actually could have like given me brain damage, right? Maybe I have brain damage. Probably not. Hit me like three times in the face till I like, stopped. They grabbed my shit. My phone had fallen out of my pocket. They grabbed my phone also. And like I walk back inside, I'm like you know, my head's like looking like a lump. And I walk back inside, and I say to my and like my friend sees me, and he, he like looks at me, he's like, "How'd it go?" And I'm like, "Fucking lump here, lump here." And he's like, "No way, you're fucking kidding me. No way. Like, what about my knife? Why didn't you use my knife?" And I'm like, mumble something, like I didn't think about it. And he's like, "Fuck, man." And we're like, we're sitting there, we're like, "Shit, what should we do?" So we're thinking. And for those of you who don't know, like the way that it works in the um, in the in the drug world, let's say the dealing world. And again, I'm no Wes Watson. I don't know shit. I was like a suburban white boy, like lowest of the low. Like dealers, like they come in many different sizes. I was like, you, you have like the guy who like buys a bunch of weed and like splits it with his friends and takes a little bit off the top to support his habit. And then you have like an actual like guy who buys and sells to make a little money. I was like one level of above, above that, maybe. Maybe not even, right? So what do I really know? Not a lot. Uh, but at least the way that it works with us is that you, like, let's let's say I, you know, because I bought my weed from somebody, right, who's a level above me. And that person was, I don't want to say, like, kind of a gangster, but, like, that person was, you would not want to mess with this person because they, like, the higher up you go in the food chain of dealers, like, the more dangerous these people actually get right and like the less anybody would, would ever want to fuck with them especially when products are at stake because products mean money and if you know i was really like his worker really if you want to think about it i was like his salesperson and he was you know supplying me with the goods and i would go and sell that and, and make my commission really um so my friend has this idea he's like let's call i don't know i don't want to say his name obviously let's, let's call let's call jimmy like, let's call Jimmy. Let's see what he says. And I was like, you know, I'm like, okay, sure. And uh, we called Jimmy. And we're talking to Jimmy. And, like, my friend calls him. Because, I, I mean, I, I would I would buy from him. I wasn't as close to him. Like, our, our relationship was really uh, transactional. It was like, I would go to him. I would buy. And then we wouldn't hang out. We wouldn't really do anything. We'd just go by and then, and then leave. My other friends, they knew him much better because they knew him from back in the day. Because my other friends were, like, I don't want to say, like, longtime criminals. But they were, like, worse worse than I was and they knew more about like that world or whatever so anyway my friend calls Jimmy and he's like uh, yeah you know uh, homie got jacked like got his shit taken and I was like I mentioned casually and I was like and I know who did it too 
And my friend looks at me, he's like, you know who did it? Like, you know their name? And I was like, yeah, I know their name. I saw their face. I know their name. I know who they are. And my friend's like, well, we'll tell Jimmy. Like, tell Jimmy. Like, you know, we can do something about it. And I was like, well, like, what are we going to do? Like, you know. And uh, my friend puts Jimmy on the phone. He puts me on the phone to talk to Jimmy. And he's like, you know, tell me who it was. And I tell him. And he's like, oh, God, that guy, man. I know that guy. He's a punk-ass little bitch, dude. Give me two hours and you'll have your shit back. And I was like, okay, <laughs> cool. So, like, by this point, you know, my other, we had, like, a group of friends. All my friends had, like, heard about what happened to me. So, they all came over to my other friend's house to kind of sit and wait it out. And um, we would get, like, basically what, what Jimmy did, right, is he he knew this kid. Because it's, it's the Palisades, like, small community, really small community. Everybody knows each other. There's no, like, anonymous people there. And if you if you know somebody, if you can call them out by name for doing something that they shouldn't have done, I was trying to sound like one of these ex-con YouTubers, but but really, like, this is the closest that I got to, like, being an actual criminal. Um, and that person is, like, in violation of, of somebody higher up from them. They will have to, uh, you know, repair that violation by any means necessary, really. So basically what happened is... Um, this this kid, these two kids who jacked me. Well, okay. So so basically, what Jimmy did is he called this guy's sister, right? And he's like, "Listen, like your brother, like he took some shit from one of my friends. He's got to like call him right now and tell him he needs to get it and like give it back right now. I'm gonna meet. I'm gonna be waiting outside your house. I'm calling my. I'm telling my homies to come. And like you know, I was told, right? I don't know. Is this illegal for me to say? Can I get in trouble for saying this? Anyway, I was told. I'm not sure if this is true. But I was told that, like, they were waiting outside this kid's house with guns, right? Like, to give you an idea, like, you know, I didn't, I never thought this guy would have guns, but, like, whatever. I, not my intention, like, him to, like, go shoot up this kid's mom's house for, like, for the weed. Ridiculous. Anyway, um, the sister, like, apparently Jimmy was, like, friends with this guy's sister or something. I, I don't know, whatever. And the sister called him. This kid had already, like called all his friends and like sold it to all of his friends so he gave it to jimmy and jimmy brought it back to my friend's house and we like waited out to make sure it was all there and it was like um half a gram short right and it came back in different bags right so he had like already sold it in the span of like an hour or two hours he'd already sold all of it and then he had to like go and bring it back and after that i was like the most loyal customer to jimmy ever i was like i i saw him as like my savior like not god but like i, I would i would not like i'd never consider buying from anybody else ever i was like this guy just saved my bacon obviously you know i was i was before this i was a, i was a good customer and causing problems for him like he never had to front me i was paid up front like i was a good customer anyway so you know he did it in his best interest i didn't really realize that at the time but uh yeah, so like I got it all back, really. And I remember like we, we waited out, all of us together. It was half a gram short. And Jimmy's like, he's like, hey, why don't you call that fool and be like, I'm coming for that dime, homie. Like, I still want my dime or something like that. And I was like, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, okay. Meanwhile, this guy who like punched me in the head a couple times, he whooped my ass in a second. Like, I had no chance against, against this guy at all. Um, ended up running into him in the Palisades at a gas station. There was like a mobile station that was like in the center of the Palisades and you would always run into people that you knew there. And so I, I went to like go put gas in my car one day, maybe like a month or two later. And I see that kid there and I'm like, oh my God, like I'm gonna get my ass beat like right now, like in public, this guy's gonna whoop my ass. And he goes, <clears throat> he goes, hey man. And I'm like, just finished putting gas in my car. And I saw him, I saw him come over to me. I was like, oh fuck, like, this is it right here. I'm gonna die. And he's like, hey, what's up? Your name's Stuart, right? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you're really lucky you got your shit back. And I'm like, I know. And he's like, yeah. And then he just walks away. I'm like, whew. Oh, God. Fucking dodge that bullet. Um, anyway, that is the story about how I got jacked for a QP one time. Pretty interesting, right? Like, you know, as I said in the beginning of the video, drugs are bad. Don't do drugs. Definitely don't sell drugs. Um, it's, not, it's not worth any legal consequences, really. I don't know, whatever. I'm not going to say selling weed isn't bad. Like, I don't think weed is really... Weed is not heroin. Like, I still think smoking weed is, is overall net negative because you are making yourself vastly less productive than you would be if you hadn't smoked. And it just, it fucks you up on so many levels. You eat way too much. You sleep too much. It's like, you know, it just makes you not productive. Like, wh why not take the precious time that you have on this earth and do something valuable? 
you know? Instead of fucking smoking weed, you're gonna like inhale smoke from a plant and like sit and stare at the wall with vacant eyes. Like, I, I wish I had that time back, you know? I really do. Anyway, maybe why I'm working so hard now. Anyway, cheers to that. Jimmy, I know you're out there. I would, I would run into him occasionally at Equinox when I lived in LA. And I think, as far as I know, he was out of the game at that point because weed had been, um, you know, at, like by the time I moved back to Equinox or moved back to LA, I was going to Equinox. Weed had been, um, you know, there were dispensaries and it was decriminal or uh, legalized or medicinalized or whatever. And I think he was like he had a he had a stake in some dispensaries. He was a fucking hustler like from day one. This guy's making bank, you know. Um, but it was always good to see him. It was always good to like see him and like it's like a homie from back in the day that you share you share deviant behavior with that kind of just reminds you of your youth and the good old days, even though you did a bunch of stupid shit and probably should have been doing something else. But but still you you I always think of those friends fondly that I had in high school. Um, not necessarily because they were from that time, but because we did so much shit that we shouldn't have done. Uh, yeah, even though I don't really talk to them so much anymore. Anyway, that was my video about that. What do you guys think? Is that an interesting video? Do you want to hear more stories of my delinquent youth? Uh, borderline delinquent youth. Not really so delinquent. Um, tell me what you think. Leave me a comment. Yeah. you have any suggestions for other videos, let me know. Peace.